nothing to anybody but you. When I wake up and go to work at City Hall, I represent you. Because nobody, and I returned a thousand dollars given to my campaign. That's two minutes. It was landfill money. That's two minutes, Tom. Mahalo. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Kimberly Marcos Pine, and I am a proud representative in the House of Representatives on behalf of the people of Eva Beach. I never thought I'd be a politician. I was just a citizen, just like you, sitting there one day, coming here to the neighborhood board, frustrated that government had left Eva Beach behind. We were nearly last in our monies for our schools to improve them, and we had the worst traffic in the entire state. We were neglected by our leaders for so many years. And so I ran for office, hoping to provide a better life for all of us here in Eva Beach. And I'm so excited that the people and I, we fought for our new north-south road. I drive it every day with honor knowing that we proved it to everyone across the state that the people can achieve great things in government. I am excited that people no longer have to be stuck in traffic just to get in and out of their homes and they can spend more time with their family. I am excited that Campbell High School was recently named one of the best schools in the nation. I am leaving the House of Representatives with great pride and honor that we have accomplished great things together. And I hope to provide the same type of success in the City Council with your help. I know that we can achieve great things for all of us. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Mike Gabbard, a candidate for Senate District 20, also known as Tulsi's dad. Uh, mahalo to the Eva Neighborhood Board for uh, hosting the forum. Nice to be back in Eva, my old stomping grounds. Some of you may remember I was a city councilman here from 2003 to 2005. We used to live on Eva Beach Road, and then we moved over to uh, Pohakapuna Road. Currently, I'm the senator for District 19, which goes from uh, Waikele to Koalina, and I've represented the district for the last six years. Now, some of you may be scratching your head saying, what's Gabbard doing here? I thought a sparrow was my senator. Well, every 10 years after the census is taken, because of the shifting populations, reapportionment happens. And so my district, 19, has changed to District 20, effective November 7th. That would be next month. District 20 includes Kapolei, Makakilo, portions of Kalailoa, Waipahu, and Eba. And specifically in Eba, all of West Block, Verona Village, and parts of Eba Villages, that would be from the homes between Kapolei Parkway and Park Road, including the homes that are on the Mauka side of Park Road. Folks, this election is about you hiring someone to be your voice in the legislature. You, the voter, are the employer. I'm your current employee. I've been trying my best uh, representing West Oahu for the last six years in the Senate as my employer. You have to decide whether you want to keep me on as an employee or fire me. In order to make that informed decision, you're doing a job interview, and that's what this forum is tonight. We are potential employees of yours. We will speak and answer your questions. You'll go home and check out our resumes on our websites, etc., and then make a decision. And by the way, uh, you'll get a couple flyers in the mail. Some of you may have already gotten this one in the mail. And there's a survey in there I'd like you to fill out. And you can either do it online or you can mail this back to me. I'm interested in finding out what issues are important to you. And once we find out what those issues are, to continue the conversation and hopefully solve those problems. I look forward to the opportunity to share my thoughts about issues facing Eva this evening. Mahalo. Aloha. I'm uh, Dean Kalani Kepaludo. I know I've got a difficult last name. Thank you for taking time out to uh, be here. I'm not here to represent any politi political party, no special interests or developers, or any particular campaign donor. If you are human, if you, if you have any sense of doing what's right for our community, I'm humbly asking for your vote on November 6th. You know, my, my opponent is, just sends out this, this flyer. He's been in office for six years, and now he's asking us where we, where we are on these issues. Where have you been, sir? I, I wouldn't even be here if I didn't feel that you were incompetent in your position. And I can just start on the issues. We're going to start right on. Act 55, Public Land Development Corporation. That's the first one. It violates every principle of democracy, sir. Representative government. 
consent of the governed, uh, individual rights, uh, uh, checks and balances, the bio lab. Where have you been, sir? Where have you been on the bio lab? I've been out there. Uh, Dave, this is an introduction of yourself. Yes. Okay. This, this is an introduction. This is this is how it's going to go from the beginning to the end. Too many introductions. So how, much, how much time? You right much, now, you got 30 seconds left. Okay, sir. Hope Peely. Where, where were you at on Hope Peely? The EVA, develop, EVA development plan last night that we got deferred. Hope Peely. It's the most productive, that's the pr most productive uh, farmland we have in the state. And you stood by while all the other communities dumped on us. The bio lab, that's another dump on us, sir. UH oversight. The Senate is, is responsible for uh, confirming those people there and that's doing in oversight, minutes, sir. That's in okay. two minutes. Aloha, thank you. Adam Wright. Yes. Adam Reader. Yes. Uh, Aloha and. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you to the neighborhood board for giving us this opportunity to have this forum. Um, I'm relatively new to politics uh, here in Hawaii, so I just wanted to introduce myself briefly. Uh, I'm a resident of Ocean Point. Uh, I've worked for the last three years at the Institute for Human Services in Honolulu. I run a homelessness prevention program. So what I do in my work is deal with families who are struggling and at risk of homelessness and very close to ending up on the beach or somewhere else. Um, and what I've noticed in the last three years in working with these families is that Many of them are not in the social services system. They're not receiving any kind of assistance. They're just regular people who are trying to work and raise their families every day. And they're finding it harder and harder to be able to afford to live here. And many of them have been born and raised here. So seeing that um, firsthand has really pushed me to, to look at what makes their life most difficult. And one of the things that's making it hard for all the families that I work with is the cost of living here, not just property and um, the cost of goods and services, but the cost that the state is putting on every single resident here. And that's taxes, that's fees, that's everything. Um, so I also worked uh, this past legislative ses session as, a, um, as an analyst at the Capitol, and I got to see firsthand how all these taxes and fees are passed over and over and over with very little concern for how it's going to affect people, especially on the lower income levels, the ones that I deal with every single day. Um, so that's really what drove me over the past few years to get more involved in politics and to work at the legislat le legislature this past session. Um, and then when this race opened up, uh, I saw the opportunity and I wanted to get in and, and be able to help those families on a larger scale that I'm helping every single day in my regular work. So um, please go to my website, votereader.com, and check out my Facebook page, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good discussion this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for being here tonight. Uh, I don't think I've seen that many people who attended this forum in the past. So uh, This is an introduction of me, as you have asked. Um, I'm also known as the mother of the candidate to my right. I've been in office for the last eight years. Um, this new <coughs> district, due to redistricting, is going to be uh, I'm only going to be incumbent for 40% uh, of the population. All of uh, Ocean Point and the old Ever Beach will be new district for me. So um, I, uh, I'm not one of those people that say, I did this, I did that. But I can tell you that within the eight years, I've been a chair of a committee. Um, two years as a chair of the Committee on uh, International Affairs. And the last four years, I had been a chair on the Committee of Housing. And the powers in the legislature or in the House of Representatives lies within the speaker and its chair. And you don't become a chair if you don't know what you're doing. So with that, I want to say that uh, by education, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a businesswoman. I own a business in Waipaho that does uh, cardiopulmonary diagnostic. I'm a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserves. And yes, I do have time for you with all that. So my my issues or my platform is not specific to anything, but it's, the, it's those that I hear when I do my grassroots campaign. I don't have a fancy website, but I do knock on each and everyone's door to see what it is that they want me to do. Because the bottom line is this, 
is that they are the people that hires me to be who I am and what I do. So whatever it is that they ask me to do, as long as it doesn't bother a lot of people, that will be the platform that I will have. One of the things that I have learned when I walk is that, of course, they took out the, the, the buses for the children. Right. So um, I will make sure that there are a lot of uh, bus companies that will come and bid for those jobs because Monopoly is not working for us. Thank you very much. And I'm not sure if her name is uh, my name is Chris Kalani Manawat, and I'm a candidate for District 40. Um, I'm also known as the sign to represent Cabanilla. Um, I started working at the Waikiki State Capitol when I was 21 years old. I had the pleasure of working with Mr. Tom Bird. He was my mentor at one point. Um, let's see. You know, when I was working at the Capitol, back when I was a volunteer, when I first started there, I once answered the phone, and a woman told me a story about how there was a ledge on her sidewalk, and that people were tripping on it, she was tripping on it. So I wrote to City and County, I did what I could to help her, and I got it, it actually got fixed. And she thanked me, she told me all about um, how better it was. It was just a simple thing, and since then, I have been a public servant. I have, uh, I'm eager to serve the community. Um, this is my first election, my first time running. Um, and I just want to make a difference. You know, um, if you want to find out more about me, you can go to my website. It's from Eva for Eva. With the from Eva, number four, Eva. And, uh, <laughs> um, just, uh, yeah, any questions, I'm open. I'm open book. You can ask me anything you want. Um, so, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you. I'm going to stand up because I can't see some of you in the back. Uh, my name is Bob McDermott. I came to Hawaii in 1982. I was a young Marine. I was stationed in KB. That was many years ago, but it was also about 100 pounds ago. Make that clear. Got out in 85 and I uh, went to Chaminade and I met uh, the woman who changed my life. She's sitting right there. Utu, will you raise your hand to everybody? Thank you. Went back into the Marine Corps in 88, did the first Gulf War, and then we came back home. Um, worked in the coffee industry, Kona Coffee, Superior Coffee. Ran for the state legislature in 1996 and Mike helped me get elected. Um, thanks, Chris. Uh, served three terms there, tried to make an effort for a higher office, was unsuccessful. And I've been at the Navy League uh, ever since, and so I see people like Brian over there. And uh, I have a master's degree in business administration, bachelor's in economics, got my master's from Shaman as well. My wife and I have eight children. I wasn't planning on running this year, uh, honest to goodness. I, as most folks know, I decided rather late. And I, I People ask me to run, and this is God's honest truth. When a, when a politician says somebody asks them to run, usually it's the guy looking in the mirror. But uh, seriously, but in my case, people actually did ask me to run. So, so I thought about it uh, probably no less than 15 times, and uh, I said, okay. And I, would, I served three terms before, so I have a passion for public policy, and it was an opportunity to get back into it. So we're working very hard, and we're going to see what we can do. Thank you for your time and attention. By the way, I want to thank all the elected officials for your service, neighborhood board folks for your service. Kurt Favella left, but he does a lot of good work with the kids. So I just want to say that. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, candidates. I do want to point out each question offered by the community will be asked. Personal attacks will not be asked. It will be worded in a way that the community benefits from what it Okay. <coughs> Candidates, this is a question that is heavy with most of a couple of times, a couple of questions that's actually asked here. Basically, if elected, what do you intend to do about the bio lab? 
This is question is to all candidates. In Kalailoa. Thank you. And we'll do the exact same way so there's no um, anything. Tom, we'll start with you and work our way down. One minute for your answer. No, I'll take a shot at it. I think I may be the only person on the entire panel who sent a testimony. The only one on record. The first person from this district in opposition. I championed a letter to the powers that be to give everyone here more time to weigh in because you weren't properly notified. This biohazard lab belonged in Kaka'aka. It was called Bait and Switch. And they decided to put it in an area close to residential housing near an airport. That's concerned security concerns. Bottom line, I took the lead, took the initiative, got the testimony, period, deadline extended for all of you. Only one that I know of that's on record formally with all the parties to be, keep the biohazard lab out of West Oahu. Rep. Pine, one minute. I think it's important to know what you're talking about. And what I've been dissatisfied with the bio lab is that they have not met with the community. And so I've made it very clear to anyone who asks me that I cannot support the bio lab until a thorough investigation and a public hearing with the community is made. It is so easy to say no, no, no when it's popular. But when you are a leader, you need to get all the facts. And we have not been given all the facts. Some of the facts that we've been given is the similar bio lab is next to schools and daycare centers in the mainland. And these are things that we need to find out if they are true or not. And that's what we find it out when people come to these community meetings. Unfortunately, the, the leaders of the bio lab have not come to the Kapolei Neighborhood Board despite multiple requests and have not come to this board despite multiple requests. So currently, as a leader, I cannot support it, but I can't be against it either, because then that would be a knee-jerk reaction. I need to get more information, as you do as well. That's one of Thank you. I'm closely monitoring the uh, Pacific Health Research Lab. You know, one of the problems that we have here is that someone has, let's say, a case of dengue fever, then they've got to, we've got to send the blood work to Colorado as the closest place. Sometimes that can take three days to three weeks. I, too, am very uh, disappointed in the efforts by UH to reach out to the community. I agree with the Kapolei uh, Montaquilla Neighborhood Board. They voted in a rezo to uh, against the project at this point. I am on record uh, in terms of the environmental assessment process. My comments are there, uh, basically, that because of the poor outreach by UH, uh, until that changes, uh, I will remain opposed to that. Uh, they really need to do their work to reach out to the community and let everybody know what's exactly at stake here. So there's some very good parts about this, but we can't make an informed decision as a community until they do the work of community outreach. Dean, one minute. Okay. With, with the bio lab from day one, I, I've been opposed to it and um, very vocal about it. Well, my, my opponent has uh, uh, known about it for at least six months prior to the rest of the community. Um, you know, this is not, you know, play, I've got a secret. You know, when you find out that you're going to have something that's going to affect your community, as a leader, you're supposed to get out there and let people know what's going on. Uh, you know, we shouldn't, what actually happened is uh, they came out and told us, oh, we, we notified the community. And that was a big lie. Because we went to 800 homes, knocking door to door, and they had lied to us. There was one person who knew about the bio lab, and he was a, a lab tech. So you've got to ask yourself, what kind of leader do you want in your Senate? Do you want somebody who's going to be hiding for six months, or do you want somebody that's going to step up and let the community know what's going on so that we can actually come together and say, you know what, uh, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, get it out. I'm opposed to it. Thanks, Dean. That's one minute. Okay, uh, obviously the same concerns as everyone else as far as the, uh, the transparency and the openness and connection with the community. My, my biggest concern is that 
Is there this non-responsive to dealing with the community boards in general uh, just to sell the project to us? I'm very concerned with how responsive they will be if it actually comes to fruition and happens. So unless, until and unless they change their approach in dealing with the community boards and the local residents, um, I can't, can't support it. Thank you so much. Um, those that buy a lab indeed pass the uh, permitting process. So it won't be there if it wasn't a permitting process. Yes, I agree with you that they should have gone to the community for our input, and that's something we're still waiting for. So they're not, I would say they are not totally not in compliance because no business will be brought up or built up not in compliance. Um, so I'm not saying that they are bad. One thing they'd be good for is that one thing that we've been crying about on the West Side is jobs. And so this company is giving us jobs. So we don't want I, that kind of jobs. <laughs> well, anything that, you know, I'm not saying it's good jobs, but that's, I'm making a statement that this community is asking for jobs all the time. Yeah, no, but whenever so there's job that comes... We want jobs to kill us. <laughs> okay. We do, what I'm saying is that we cannot deduce that this company is going to kill us because they went through the permitting process. They have a license with the Department of Health. I think the part that they are not in compliance with is coming and letting us know what it is. So we can ask questions. So we can have informed decisions. That's all I'm saying. That they have a permit. Thank you, Reverend. So, uh, in defense of them, I'm not saying they're bad because, you know, they have federal guidelines that they follow. Yes, they did not come to us. Uh, Rep. Cominello, pass it to Chris, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Chris, one minute. Well, um, my opinions are quite the same as most of the board. Um, I am in opposed to the bio lab um, for the same reasons. It, you know, it needs to be brought to the people. You know, um, they could have gone through all the permitting processes and got their, um, you know, showed their qualifications. But then, um, I honestly think that a company like this should be an industrial area, not a not so close to a residential area. So. Um, I think the residents should decide. And if a meeting comes and we're given that opportunity, um, I think that'd be great. But as of right now, I stand in opposition. Bob, one minute. Yeah, not much uh, else to say after listening to about 10 people uh, comment on it, but uh, I think Chris had a good comment. The industrial area would probably be a place that you want to put something like this or the basement of a hospital. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, exactly what they do there. Uh, it sounds a little scary, but other than that, I, I, I need to learn more about it. And I think it's at least one district over, so it wouldn't be a, an immediate concern for this uh, side, District 40. Thanks, Bob. Thanks again, This next question is also, as to all candidates, we'll begin with Rep Pine this time, and we're done that way, and in with Councilman Roberta. What is your position on Act 55 and the PLDC? Rep Pine, one minute. Well, Act 55 originally was an idea to maximize state land for the people of Hawaii, to maximize your tax dollar. Even the Sierra Club at the time that it passed had not raised concerns. And so many of the legislators that usually side with the Sierra Code did not raise concerns as well. Recently, however, in the last year, many organizations have been able to look more deeply into Act 55. And it has raised a lot of concerns. Many of us are looking forward to seeing the results. Today there was a hearing at the state capitol of the meetings and how this organization is going to create their rules. Are they going to put in their rules where they cannot avoid the environmental impact statement process? Are they going to put in their rules that they will be ensure that, that the public always has an input as to how we will develop land? This is very important because what will happen to the legislature, and Mr. Senator Gabbard will say this as well, 
the That's leaders of the House, oh, I'm sorry, okay, you can finish my sentence. Since you passed it to you, Mike, Senator Gabbard, a um, minute. The basic purpose of, of Act 55 of uh, PLDC is to facilitate the development of public lands. As the chair of the Energy Environment Committee, I, I voted in favor of it basically to help spur the development and expansion of geothermal energy. Um, as of right now, as Rep Pine mentioned in the meeting today, basically they are trying to come up with the administrative rules. Uh, if the administrative rules that they're coming up with, that they will put forth tomorrow, uh, if it needs amendments, then we can take a look at it this next legislative session. There's a lot of kind of um, hysteria out there that this is going to, it's a done deal. The fact of the matter is it's not a done deal. Uh, amendments can be made. Uh, another point is that uh, Chapter 343, the environmental uh, laws are, you must follow the, the Chapter 343 in there. Uh, and so again, it's just going to take some time. Let's see what the the results of that meeting were today, see what about their administrative rules, and if they're not, if it, do, if it does not make sure that the cultural resources and environmental uh, resources are kept safe, then we can amend it this next legislative session. Thanks, Senator Governor. Uh, Dean, one minute. Okay, um, my problem with Act 55, and it really bothers me, is uh, uh, across the board, the legislature passed this and uh, and only one representative, I think, stood up and said no. Um, the the problem with this is uh, consent of the government. You, know, you talk about democracy; they they violated every principle of democracy when they passed this. Consent of the government. Hawaiian sovereignty groups do not recognize the state and federal uh, authority over the lands. Representative government. Uh, our neighbor islands are not represented on that board. The rule of laws. These guys that are on this board can override some of the environmental laws. Individual rights, property, uh, people's property uh, rights are being violated and there's no anything in the administrative rules to mediate that. And then checks and balances. These guys that are on this board can, can uh, do backroom deals. This is like pay to play, no bid contracts. That's one minute day. It's just incompetence in our legislature. Aloha. Adam, one minute. Okay, um, <clears throat> I actually, I do support pretty strongly the intent of the act because what the PLDC can do is leverage one of the state's greatest resources that it has at its disposal, which is its land, which is something that's scarce and is very difficult to come by, obviously, in our state. Um, there are a lot of concerns with what's going to happen with the administrative rules and with the environmental impacts that could, could come along with this. Um, but if they are able to get that worked out, and depending on what happens with the administrative rules when they come out, if um, the local people are going to be amenable to it, I think there are a lot of things that the PLDC could do that would be good as far as um, leasing land out possibly to create uh, single resident occupants um, homes for people because that's one of our biggest problems that I deal with as far as the homeless is there's no affordable housing for just a single person who doesn't make much money. Um, so that's just one example of something that the PLDC could do to actually spur growth and make life more affordable for people here. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, uh, Act 55 is something new. So everything, every time there's something new, the politics of fear comes to play. There's a lot of good intentions with Act 55. And one of the things were uh, pointed out by uh, Mr. Weeder, I agree with him, we need land management. And yes, it's not perfect. Yes, there's a lot of concerns. But if you're dealing with something that can be changed, it's not permanent. I agree with Senator Gabbard. This thing has good intentions. Whatever that's passed in the legislature can be changed. All it needs are people behind it saying, this is not exactly how we want it to be. When we have those measures of the legislature that we hear about it, the public never come to show up and show up their concerns. No matter how we publicize the initiative, what we need is those concerns that you have on the public hearing and come and let us know. But whatever it is on Act 55 that you are not in favor with, in favor of, you let us know. We'll try and fix it for you. Thank There's 76 you know. members in that legislature that you can approach. Chris, one minute. Okay, well, with Act 55, um, 
I do not know the exact details of the bill, but then I just know that it's uh, the intent is to save people money. Um, now, if I am to be elected, you know, the thing that I will do is, like Representative Kevin Dillon say, you know, um, I will go out, I'll reach out to the community, and I will see what the people have to say, what they like, what they don't like, and I will bring it back to the capital and do my best to serve the community as best as possible to make it so in the favors that the people want it to be. Thank you. Uh, no, I, I don't support it. Of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. I have the opportunity to see all the public outcry on TV, so that, that also weighs into my decision making. It reminds me of HCDAC in the scheme of things, which was put together, in, I think, in the mid-70s, and it's been an unmitigated disaster. Also, what I find ironic is, you know, Mr. Iowa, who is the a nice man, of course, but he's the chairman of the DLNR. If he didn't have that job, he'd be the first guy protesting and leading the protest. So I find it ironic knowing all these characters and how it works out. But no, I, I, I wouldn't support it. We have a, the blessing and the curse is we have a, a, a permitting process to get things done. It's excru excruciatingly slow. That's the curse. But the blessing is it's excruciatingly slow. So if we're making a mistake, or it's not a project of merit, we'll catch it in time. We live on an island. Thank you. Let me educate everybody. I'm on your side. Senate Bill 1555 was passed on May 3rd. Reps Karen Awana and Joe Jordan from the Leeward Coast voted against it. They knew exactly what Act 55 would be. They took a stand. On May 3rd, the reason we're here tonight is so you can differentiate between candidates. My candidate, love opponent, didn't show up on May 3rd. I can't tell you what her position is because she didn't even vote. I have the computer here. Let's do fact checks. The most important measure going before the people today, Big Island, Kauai, outraged. I'm outraged. I introduced a resolution, 12-270. Because I respond to you. I don't wait for the developers and the campaign donors to come and give me a knee-jerk reaction. I'm on the forefront making the wake. I'm on the forefront. And I want to let you know that that Act 55 is I'm not only against it, but this is a pay-to-play measure. Thank you, Councilman Burns. Wow.